G'day everyone, B Agent Day here. We're going to do the in-depth review of this Dell Precision 3550. It's a 15-inch mobile workstation from Dell and it's the entry model to the Precision range. We're going to have a look into the features of this computer as well as the internals of this computer a little bit later in the video, so be sure to stick around for that, as well as we're going to look into the temperatures and fan noise of this computer as well. So I will be putting timestamps along the different sections of the video so you can actually skip to the ones that you'll all be interested in. Let's have a look at the ports. Starting on the right hand side of the computer, we have the security lock slot, and then we got the RJ45 Ethernet port, which works on a lever system, and then we got the HDMI port, and that's version 1.4B, and then we got two USB 3.2 Gen 1 ports. Now, one on the right has PowerShare, and then we have the headphone jack, and then we have the micro SD card reader. And underneath that is the USIM tray. Looking on the left hand side of the computer, we've got the AC barrel style power port and then a USB C port. Now, this can be USB 3.2 Gen 2 or the optional Thunderbolt 3 port. Now, this one's got the Thunderbolt 3 enabled. And then we have a USB 3.2 Gen 1 port. Now, that's USB Type A and then we have the exhaust vents and then on the right we have the optional smart card slot. That's the configurations for the Dell Precision 5550. Now for the processor side it is using the 10th generation Intel Core. Now you can configure it with an i5 or an i7. Now as for RAM wise it can go up to a maximum of 32 gigs of RAM. Now it does have two sole DIMM slots so you can actually swap or upgrade later on. And as for the storage wise, it does have one slot of M.2 and also it's able to fit in a two and a half SATA hard drive as well. And as for the graphics wise, it does of course use Intel integrated graphics, but you can opt in to have it configured with an NVIDIA Quadro P520 discrete graphics. So you can run some professional applications that require discrete graphics. As for the display wise, it can be configured with a HD panel. Now that one is rated at 220 nits of brightness and that doesn't have any touch. And there is also a full HD version as well. Now there's three variants of that one there. There's a touch and non-touch version. Both of them are rated at 220 nits of brightness as well. And there's also a non-touch version, which is rated at 300 nits of brightness if you need it a little bit brighter. Now, I can also tell you that the all four panels have a more of a matte sort of type of feel to them, so they're not very glossy at all. The computer does come with a 720p webcam that's located on top of the display. Now, there are two versions of that one. There's an RGB version, which is what I've got here, and there's also an IR version. Now, with the RGB version, it does come with a privacy shutter, so it's just made a little flick of a switch, and you'll see uh, it'll go red, which means that there's actually a physical shutter that goes over it, so you won't have prying eyes, or if it accidentally turns on, at least it actually have something that's blocking the view for those who are worried about the privacy. This is a recording from the built-in 720p webcam. Now this is the RGB version and this is the video and audio unedited so you can see what it looks like. Now I've got two types of lights currently turned on. I've got one of my studio lights turned on, which is quite bright. And I've also got some down lights in this room that's also turned on. Now I'm going to actually turn off the studio light so you can see what it looks like. And this should hopefully adjust. And I've only got two down lights at the back of me and there's some down lights really far away from me which is in the front so this is actually quite a dark environment so i'd love to hear what your thoughts are about the video and audio quality of the 720p webcam and i'll just turn on my studio light back on so you see that adjust and of course with better lighting you should hopefully get better picture as well so definitely put a comment below i'd love to hear what your thoughts are there are two speakers located on the front bottom of the computer now, when I tested out the maximum loudness of the speakers, it managed to measure in at a peak of 81 decibels, which is loud enough. Uh, you will be able to be okay when you're actually doing video conferencing and doing presentation when you're out in the field or in a cafe, so that's all right. As for the sound quality of the speakers, I would probably say they're pretty average. I wouldn't say they actually have really bad sound. They'll do all right, the acoustics are okay, but the bass, they're not really much there at all. They're probably about nearly non-existent, the bass. 
And as for the mids and highs, they're actually there and they do okay. But the pretty average, and that's kind of what you expect for mostly a business computer here. The Dell Precision 3550 can come in with either a 65 watt power adapter or a 90 watt power adapter. Now with the 65 watt power adapter, that'll be for the ones that just got the integrated graphics and the ones that have the discrete graphics configured in it, it will be a 90 watt power adapter. As for the battery wise, it can be either configured with a 51 watt hour battery or a 68 watt hour battery. Now this particular one I've got here is configured with the 68 watt hour battery. Now it does support express charge, so you can actually charge the battery from zero to 80% in one hour's time. And unfortunately, it does take a little bit of time for it to charge from zero to 100. It takes around about eight hours. As for the battery life, I did test out this particular unit. Now this one came configured with a 60 watt hour battery. And with my battery life test, I tested in the four different modes in the Dell optimized mode. Now with my battery life test, I do have a consistent workload on the processor, RAM, hard drive and also discrete graphics if it has it this one does have a discrete graphics and also the screen brightness at hundred percent now in best performance mode it managed to get two hours and 30 minutes for the battery now as for better performance mode it managed to get two hours and 45 minutes so a little bit better as for the better battery mode i did drop the processing down to 50 percent as well as the screen brightness to 50 percent and it managed to get six hours and 15 minutes. And in battery saving mode, it managed to get seven hours and 10 minutes. Now I do have a new mode, which I've also included in the battery life test. It's called media mode. And that is pretty much putting the screen brightness at 50% and also the speaker volume to 50% as well. And of course it's connected to Wi-Fi, and I pretty much stream YouTube all the way through and it managed to get 10 hours and 45 minutes out of the battery. So that's pretty decent, I've got to say, especially for a mobile workstation. There's some pretty good battery life for a mobile workstation. So the weight on a Dell Position 3550 is 1.93 kilos, and add in the 90 watt power adapter is a total of 2.35 kilos. When I tested out the fan noise and temperatures of this computer, I found most of the heat is located near the minus or hyphen key. Now that's unsurprising because that's where the processor and also the discrete graphics lives right there. And the other area that you find when the computer is on idle or just doing a little bit of work, the other area that gets heated up a little bit is it starts off where the button eight key is. And as you do more work, the computer then goes over the processor and that's then goes, jumps over to where the minus and hyphen key is. So it's not really where you normally type. Uh, you don't hit those keys that much often, so it's actually quite usable. The other area that gets heated up a little bit is located on the left-hand side of the fingerprint reader. And that's and also on the right-hand side of where you normally put your palm. So it's not completely underneath your palm, this area that gets heated up. And what's underneath there is the M.2 SSD hard drive. So as you actually do more workload using the storage, it will start to heat up a little bit. Now it's not crazy, man. It's not that uncomfortable there, but that's the other area that you find, especially you'll see in, in the readings there, that you'll find that it gets heats up a little bit. Now, first off, my ambient temperature when I took my measurements was 20 degrees Celsius for my ambient temperature. I took a base measurement when the computer was on idle and the maximum temperature on the keyboard was 30 degrees Celsius. And the fan noise was a maximum of 31 decibels. So that's pretty much dead quiet. Then I put the computer on 20% load, so that's pretty much average use. So tasks like office productivity work, streaming videos, as well as surfing the web, you're looking at maximum temperature on the keyboard was 39.5 degrees Celsius. And the fan noise did come up a little bit at 32 decibels, so still very quiet. And then I put the computer on 50% load and the maximum temperature on the keyboard was 43 degrees Celsius. And the fan noise stayed at 32 decibels. Then I put the computer on 100% load and the maximum temperature on the keyboard was 44 degrees Celsius. And the fan noise did spin up a little bit and it had read at a maximum of 36 decibels. So you will hear it, but it's not a whiny, high whiny sound at all. And now this is under your optimized power mode. And then I put the computer on ultra performance mode for the Dell power manager. 
and the maximum temperature on the keyboard was 44.5 degrees Celsius and the fan noise had a maximum of 38 decibels so it has spin up the fan up a little bit more and you will get a little bit better performance using an ultra performance mode. I also measure the bottom back cover of the computer and the hottest area measured in at 57 degrees Celsius. So it's definitely hot down there and I really wouldn't advise people to put this on your lap. I don't really advise any laptop to be put on their lap these days. They do get heated up quite a bit and I would advise to have some sort of a surface to put between the computer and your lap else you will start to get a fairly warm lap or actually more like burnt lap than anything else. Testing out the stability performance of the 3550. Now this one is configured with an i5 10310U processor with a base clock speed of 1.7 gigahertz. Now this computer has been running on consistent load for just nearly about close to under three hours here. And we've got now process, I did set the processor set to 100, pretty much 90% processing for the processor and also the RAM at 100% and then this at 100%. But we're actually now currently seeing that the processor is only going to around about 50 to 60%. And our speed of the processor is only doing about 1.1 to about 1.3 gigahertz. So that's actually below the base clock speed of this processor. So we are getting thermal throttling on this computer quite hard actually. And I do have the performance manager, the power manager set to ultra performance as well. So that's actually very interesting to see. And I'm hoping, I'll we'll just have to stop this thing out to see if I've make sure I have set this to pretty much 90% workload for the processor here. I'll just reset that. And yes, I've got pretty much 90% load currently on the processor, disk and RAM, and pretty much we are getting thermal throttle because it's only able to maintain around about 50 to 60% utilization of the process to try and to calm down the temperature of the processor. So hopefully you'll be able to make use of this. And if you are looking at the i7, it might be something we have to talk to Dell and try and get better performance out of the i7 there. As for the keyboard, it is housing a full size keyboard. Now it does have the number pad on the right hand side, which is great if for those who are working with numbers or doing a lot of data entry, that's fantastic. And the keys on this is housing the 2020 model of the keyboard, which is good because I find a little bit more narrow, so the spacing in between, so you can actually type a little bit more quicker. And each individual surface of each key has got a very nice smooth plastic feel to it as well. And it's got a fair bit of key travel as well. As for the sound of the keys, it's got a bit of a more like a dampened click sound than anything else. It's not a big click, but it is quite dampened there. So you won't be annoyed by the sound of the keyboard. And of course it is backlit as well. And they still have the track point in the middle or the G spot. And of course underneath the space bar, you still got your free buttons that support the trackpad for those who do still use that. And as for the trackpad, it is located on the bottom now. It does look a little bit small, but it is definitely not small at all. It's just because this is a 15 inch and just proportionally, it looks quite small. But it is a nice decent size when you actually put this against a 13 or 14, it is a nice decent size. And you've got two mechanical buttons on the bottom still to support the trackpad. And the trackpad is got a bit of a, um, what we called plastic feel to it. It's not a matte feel to it. It's a bit of a plastic feel and it's quite good to register your fingerprints and it does support multi gesture as well. And you'll find if you've got moist fingers, it will be able to support that quite easily to read that as well. So that's nice. And as for the palm rest, it's got a bit of the same similar feel to the trackpad. There's not much difference to the surface of the trackpad and you actually have plenty of space for your palm to rest when you're especially typing. So you won't be get, becoming very uncomfortable at all. And the computer can be configured with a fingerprint reader, which is located on the very right hand side of the computer. 
As for the display with the bezel, it's actually quite narrow surprisingly. It's not an infinity edge all the way to the edge, but it's still got a bit of bezel, but it's quite narrow, especially on the sides and only even on the bottom is actually quite narrow as well, which is a bit of a surprise to me. And on top, there is a little bit of bezel on top as well, enough for the webcam and a little bit more, but it is not crazy wide like some of the others. Now it is a 16 by nine display and it also doesn't use PWM, which is great to see. And as for the screen brightness, it is rated at 220 nits of brightness, which is what I've got in here, which is the full HD non-touch version. With 220 nits of brightness, it's definitely enough for indoors and to actually conquer some of the glare that you get from windows. Now, as for being outdoors, this will start to struggle with 220 nits of brightness. It does start to struggle a fair bit. And if you're in a cafe or on the outside area, then you'll start to see this struggle a little bit. But if you're indoors, it'll be fine. Let's have a look at the internals. First off, we need to unscrew the eight screw holding the back cover in. Now these screws will stay with the back cover so you actually won't lose them, which is fantastic. After that, you just need a tool to pry this thing open. I'm just using my daughter's Play-Doh scalpel tool. It seems to be very good for this particular task. And my advice is to actually go from the hinge and then work your way around the side and from the hinge, work your way along the back. And then I do it again on the other side, so sort of hinge around the side and then hinge through the, the rear. Now I've actually pre-done this one here to speed things up. So I'll just lift this back cover out so you can actually see what this looks like. And this is the internals. Now, first off, we can actually see there's a 68 watt hour battery here, which is the large battery. And to actually undo the battery, it is just this little player here, and you just pull this thing off. Now, I won't pull it off because I'm just going to show you what's underneath here. And it's held in by two screws. I've just undone them really to speed things up again. And pretty much, I'll just lift it up so you can actually see what this looks like. And there's actually not really much underneath there, as you can see. So I'm just going to put this one lying back down here. And on the left hand side of here, we can see the M.2 SSD hard drive here. And then this is space for the two and a half inch SATA hard drive. Now this is the SATA header for the two and a half inch hard drive. Above that, we have the coin battery and that's connected by here. So if you need to reset that, just un disconnect that, it's very easy. And then above that is the Wi-Fi card here. And then on the right hand side here is the two sold dim slots for the RAM slots which is really easy to upgrade the RAM. And of course, above that is the processor and also the GPU, which is you probably won't touch because that's part of the system board. I did perform the benchmarks for this particular unit. Now this one came with, configured with an i5 10310U processor with 16 gigs of RAM and 512 M.2 SSD hard drive. And here is the scores for Passmark, Citibench R15 and R20, PC Mark 10, 3D Mark, Crystal Disc Mark, Geek Bench, and Spec View Pref. Dell has created a good entry model mobile workstation and has pretty good performance as well as good build construction as well and a good range of ports as well. It would be nice if Dell put in a few more options for the display like 4K resolution as well as, as having a few more brightness to the display panel as well. Now I also would like to see Dell to actually put in a 1080p webcam hopefully in the next revision as we are doing a little bit more content creation as well as more video conferencing. I think 20, 720p is a little bit out of the past but it will still definitely do you fine. If you find the video informative or enjoyed it smack that like button for me or even to support me smack that like button as well and if you haven't done it already subscribe by the channel by hitting that subscribe button bottom hand screen. I do try to upload a new video every week and just remember imperfections in life makes it beautiful and interesting. I'll see you next video.